Hey, villagers. I have a box. Go get some popcorn. News from the booth! This box is from Marshall Electronics. Right, the people that make guitar amplifiers. Mr. Nigel Tufnell with the Marshall Stack guitar. But I didn't really think they were microphone people. I was wrong. Let's take a look. Scissors. Oh yes, I'm so professional. I remembered all my things before I started. Recently I went to the NAB show. NAB is the uh, National Association of Broadcasters. As I'm walking the content floor, as you do, I stumbled across the Marshall booth. So I stopped and I talked to this man. This is Mark. Mark is a super nice guy and he just got back from NAM, which I would expect them to be at because that's the National Association of Musicians and I don't know. Anyway, that's for music people. So why was Marshall there? Turns out they have microphones. That's what's in here. Okay, okay. Oh, here we go. What do we have in the box? This is the V87 from MXL, which is a division of Marshall. Duh. Documentation cleaner. Ooh, it's a heavy boy. Let's put that to the side for a minute. You have your hard mount, important. This must be the actual shock mount. Wow, heavy metal, heavy metal, <laughs> Marshall, heavy metal, get it? It's like a screen pop filter thing. I wonder how well it works. Typically these metal ones aren't great, but we'll give it a shot. And that's everything. Ooh, heavy, forbidden spice packet, no pad switches, no roll off. Switch is nothing, just your standard mic. So this is everything that you get in the box. The microphone, uh, shock mount, pop filter, hard mount, extra bands, and a how to use it guide. Because it's a condenser microphone and not a dynamic or a USB, I'm not gonna test it here. We're gonna test it in my booth because that makes the most sense. Let's go. In the booth, the MXL V87 is now hooked up. I have uh, run a Mogami Gold cable. And by the way, Marshall, MXL, Mogami, same company. Just so you know how this is set up, I'm recording this directly into my Zoom F3 field recorder. It is direct 32-bit float, so I don't have any presets. What you're hearing is what's coming out of this actual microphone, raw, uncut, this is it. I highly suggest grabbing some headphones because it will really help you understand how this microphone sounds. When I was putting this on the boom arm, uh, a couple of things became apparent. Number one, very good construction on the shock mount, very solid, very stable, no problems there. When I installed the microphone, I actually had to do it twice. It's this, it's a standard thing where you kind of screw the bottom and put the microphone in and it threads up to the bottom. However, when I was then going to put on the pop filter, I realized you have to install their little pop filter from the bottom, not from the top with the pop filter. Pizza's perfect with pineapple on top. I'm gonna really push it. Pizza's perfect with pineapple on top. Pizza's perfect with pineapple on top. Crazy plosive, right? You really hear that. So that pop filter seems to work pretty good. Let's try it with, damn it. Let's try it with <laughs> the Hawken. Pizza's perfect with pineapple on top. Pizza's perfect with pineapple on top. Here's their pop filter. Let's put it about where it's supposed to go. Pizza's perfect with pineapple on top. Pizza's perfect with pineapple on top. No filter. Pizza's perfect with pineapple on top. This kind of works. I'm impressed. How well does the shock mount work? Here I am tapping on the desk, tapping on the boom arm, tapping on this itself, and tapping on the microphone. No real resonant frequencies. Sounds pretty good. This is a cardioid pickup pattern. It, the little cardioid thing is in front here. It no, tells you which side to talk into. Let's just do a quick uh, off-axis rejection test. And this is how it sounds when I talk into this way. Now I'm gonna turn it to 90 degrees. Also, 
talking into it. Ooh, it kind of tilted a little, but that's okay. Still off to the side here. I'm on camera. Yes, okay, good. <laughs> and here's the other 90 degrees, and this is how it sounds. Now let's go to the back. This is the hardest part, the back, twisting it around. Maybe I can, ah, here we go. We can just do it like this. You'd think I'd be better at this by now. Okay, here's the back. <laughs> Three inches away, off axis rejection. This is how it sounds. I'm a professional. This is the proximity effect, and this is how it is when I talk right up on the mic. I am on this pop filter. My nose is actually touching the little metal bit, which means I'm about an inch away, maybe an inch and a half at the most. And this is how it sounds when I'm close. Now I'm gonna pull back to my normal talking distance. This is where I normally speak when I'm talking into the microphone for voiceover. I'm a little over a fist away from the microphone. I'm very comfortable at this distance. I think I can get a little loud. Uh, it doesn't pick up all the clicks. That's kind of where I normally sit. A hang loose in a fist, you know, however you want to say that. That's probably 12 inches or so from the microphone. This is how it sounds there. Now I'm at the back of my booth. I'm starting to, why do I talk louder? I talk louder because you're farther away. That's kind of naturally what happens. But I've gotten people complaining. How can we tell the sound if you just increase and decrease the volume of your voice? Fair point. Don't do this. The V8, the MXL V87 will set you back about 200 bucks. It's not a very expensive mic. And so far from what I'm hearing, gosh, I keep poking myself. What the hell? And so far from what I'm hearing, it's a very, A, it's very clean. And B, it's got a nice tone to it. Well, I'll know more after I edit. However, um, so far, so good. I want to compare it, though, against my workhorse. This is the microphone that I use day in and day out. The KSM32, this guy right here. This is my workhorse. This is my everyday microphone. Uh, this microphone really suits my voice because it doesn't pick up... Because it's a warm microphone, I can get a little bit farther away from it and still have that resonance. And by doing so, I also get rid of a lot of the clicks and pops that happen in my mouth. I have this intranasal click that happens every so often. It's very annoying. My workhorse. So let's put these two against each other. When I was talking to Mark about the uh, $100 microphone challenge that I did, um, I used this mic. And it got knocked out of the running pretty early. Not because it was a bad microphone. It's just very... Uh, middle of the road. It didn't, it's not outstanding in any way. There's no characteristic to the mic. It's not exceptionally flat either. It's just kind of mid forward and a little bit uh, dull. So it, uh, it got cut quick. And I told him that and he agreed with me, like I said. And he asked me about the V87. I said I'd never heard of it. I got his business card. He took mine. Uh, so a week or so after I got back from NAB, I sent him an email. I would love to take you up on your offer on trying out a V87. If you have an extra one lying around, I'd be happy to test it and then send it back to you. He had a high degree of confidence in this microphone. And knowing what I do and knowing how picky I am, it didn't assuage him one bit. I got to use the word assuage. I love that word. He even went so far as to compare the sound of this V87 to the Neumann U87, which is the microphone all voice actors covet, and someday it will be mine. Oh yes. Sorry, I'm back. Here's the frequency response chart. But look at this, the equivalent noise, 8.5 dB. So we're gonna put this to the test. Let's see how much noise we get. So what you see here, this is uh, the sound file from the video you just watched. Uh, there's the beginning where I wrap the microphone up in the blanket, and then I, you know, open the door, and then I close the door, and then after I close the door, there's this stretch right here that is uh, the quiet part. So let's just highlight that, and then what I'm going to do is using that audio sample, we're actually going to find out uh, how quiet it is. And so after I do a quick analysis here, uh, and then uh, hold this down so we can see it. And so when the analysis comes up, what we find is that this is the relative noise of the microphone. Negative 71 is like non-existent practically. 
I decided that I was going to put this microphone to the test. It's really the first time I've really put a mic through this kind of extended test for a significant amount of time. I used it for a while, and I really feel like I know this microphone now. I know all the pros and a few cons, very few cons, but there are a few. So let's let me get those out of the way. First and probably the biggest con for the V87 is it doesn't have a roll-off switch. The reason a low-cut filter is important to me is that now that summer is here and the air conditioner kicks on from time to time, I don't want to have to go in and edit out any sort of very low rumble that might happen. Even though I'm in my whisper room, sometimes it cuts through. So I, you know, having to check that in post is a big deal. If I can just throw a switch on the microphone, like on my Shure, then I know that that low end's not going to cut through. So I wish this had a low cut filter. It doesn't, unfortunately. Now, secondly, is the shock mount for this. Um, it's built really well. It's a good shock mount, but when you put it in there and the mic is turned upright, it's very top heavy. It wobbles a lot. It feels unstable. So I flipped it over and I'm hanging, you know, I'm using it hanging down like this, and I'm typically not a hang down kind of microphone person, so it bugs me a little at first. I've gotten kind of used to it, but um, I don't particularly like having to hang it like that in order to speak into it and not feel like it's going to fall over or something. And the last thing also has to do with the shock mount. When you plug your mic cable in after you get your mic all set up in the shock mount it clicks in it's fine it's all good but you can't reach the clip to take the mic cable out you actually have to unscrew the entire microphone pull it through grab the mic cable then pull it out it's a bit awkward uh to say the least it's not a deal killer and it's a very small con but it's a little bit annoying if you're not moving your microphone very much you're not taking it off and putting it back on and then it's not a big deal but it's something that you need to be aware of Okay, now for the pros. Uh, it's super quiet. That's number one. The pickup pattern is generous, so I can move around a little bit with this microphone, and I don't really feel like it falls off much at all. I like that a lot um, because I can be animated when I talk and I'm doing voiceover, and it's nice to be able to know that you're not going to have audio dropouts just because you moved, you know, two inches one way or the other. And the audio quality, it's really nice. Uh, it's the high ends are crisp without being too sharp and the low is full and robust. It's not muddy. It It's not really a flat microphone. I wouldn't call this a transparent microphone. It, you can hear just a little bit of a scoop in there and that's okay because it's not over pronounced but it definitely enhances that that kind of scooped sound with the EQ just slightly. But to be fair about that scoop, I was comparing it against the KSM32, which is very, very flat, very transparent, a little warm. So this being a little, just a slight bit scooped was really noticeable. When you compare it to other microphones, it doesn't really stand out that much. So it's a great sounded mic. And for 200 bucks, it's phenomenal. I really don't understand why this microphone isn't talked about that much in voiceover circles. It's a great mic. I mean, people talk about the TLM 103, the NT1A, right? Hell, people talk about the 2020 more than they talk about this microphone. The V87 deserves a better reputation than I think it has, which is kind of like no reputation. It's just not in the circles. It's not talked about. I've never heard anyone say, oh, the V87 was my first mic. I really liked it. It was a great entry-level mic. It's a good all-around mic entry-level or not. I'd love to know your thoughts about the V87. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I hope it was helpful. Until next time.